guess one thing to do and I haven't done yet on this one is to uh, just take your uh, a light one. You know, this is a medium, medium too. I still need to come along with some rougher sandpaper and uh, this one's a little bit of a saw mark from the bandsaw. Just roll it back and forth over the edge. Not hard, just, just barely. See if you have a consistent edge. We'll we'll do some more with some uh, sandpaper. This is one of those things that doesn't happen all at once. So. so on these bottom sides, you're going to have it just down a little bit. Enough of a rounding there to keep from uh, ripping out. Well, I've gotten tired of this thing being in the way, and usually after the rails are on, it comes. It's a pain in the butt to try to uh, work around this thing, and this actually served its purpose. That part's done. Tool. This is the first time I ever used it on, on this. It's another one of those keepers that's done a really good job. I got some 80 grit on some uh, cheap paper, so I don't know if this 80 grit is going to be as good as a, a 3M 80 grit, but it's doing the number on it. So I found this thing, uh, this little guy really works great for this bottom edge here. Just rolled it back and forth. I'll show you how. <laughs> done is taking a, uh, some little sticks and glued some sandpaper to them and uh, <coughs> pardon me just run them down in here doesn't take much a couple strokes just give it a little bit of rounding over and then for getting in here on these edges just I just take just kind of round it in Use your thumb to push into it. Okay. 
And you got some fuzzies inside, you can do this a little bit too. Works for doing that too. I have the majority of the sanding and shaping done. There's a little bit of touch up here and there. I didn't notice, uh, I'll show you in a second here on another angle, but uh, we're going to start working on the corners now. And I've been doing some stuff, so let's, um, ahead of time, I probably should have, but it's it's too complicated in time because I'm going to show you the, the thinking process of what I'm doing because uh, I changed my mind halfway through the process. So let me uh, set up again and we'll do something different. Or not at all. One of the things I noticed uh, when I quit the other day that I had that slope. You can see the slope on, the, uh, on that one... Uh, angle coming in on the transom side. Well, the, the one on the other side, the one on the other side hadn't uh, bent down as much, so I had to go and uh, uh, do a little bit more uh, trimming with the plane on that corner to get them even. That's something you want to do. I was doing too much on this other corner uh, for the video part, and I forgot the other one. So you got to be, you got to remember that you got to do both sides at the same time, and then walk around the boat to see if it looks the same. One of my original things on this corner was to make a kind of like a boomerang kind of thing to fit under here. I've got it shaped, but uh, it was, I mean, you know, the cardboard can bend a little bit more, but when you stick a piece of quarter inch plywood in here, it doesn't, didn't, didn't want to go across and I had a big gap in there. So I abandoned this idea and then came back with a shaped piece, which will then fit right in here like this. So it'll give me quite a bit, you know, like an inch of uh, epoxy service on either side of the gap here over most of it. I mean, these holes will come in, but the easy fillet will go down and epoxy to it too here. So I've got another one made on the other side. And uh, basically you're just taking, uh, I just took this thing and laid it down on a piece of uh, plywood and then uh, shaped the corner. Kind of like, you know, like that. And then I've already got it pre-beveled, rounded over, sanded on the bottom. So, and I think I might gel magic in this side. I've got a good contact here, and I can pot puddle up some over here. So I think it'll work. So let me go ahead and do that, and then we'll come back after I get those in place, uh, and we'll start drilling some holes around the edges for the screws. Okay, I've got my thing here with a blob of gel magic on it, so now I'll go ahead. Oh, good. Good, good, good. I had enough in there to have a nice, nice squeeze out. There. Okay. Switched over to uh, Easy Fillet for these front ones. And stick it in there and press into shape. Clamper in place. Kind of get your finger in there and do a little bit of shaking. Try to keep as much epoxy off the wood as you can, but we'll have to do a little bit of sanding on here. Okay, so I got both of them done now. Went with the easy fillet on the on the front and gel magic in the back, and I probably should have used uh, easy fillet on both of them. One of the things I'm doing now is painting the uh, the straight mixed silver tip, painting the ends. I want them to, especially these end cut parts here, 
I want them to uh, absorb epoxy to uh, so it doesn't dry out the uh, easy fillet when I stick it in next. Okay. We'll come back. This doesn't have to dry in order to do this next step. We got our little bag of easy fillet here. Just let gravity do its work. I guess get my hand out of the way. Get in. Push it down in there. I was debating whether or not to uh, drill a small hole in that uh, block we put in just to let some of this stuff squeeze down and let some of the air, trapped air in there, get out. When it starts mooshing up back on you, you, know, you can probably figure you're down at the bottom. And I'll leave a little bit high. Come back and sand that down. I'm gonna go do the rest of them. That's basically it. I even took uh, my putty knife and some of the leftover and filled in the uh, the holes, the sight holes we made here. Now I'll have to sand that down again so that the stain will. Uh, penetrate any epoxy that's on the surface. So I don't know how much time uh, this is, whether we'll come back for the uh, trimming or not. So. The easy fillet has cured. It took a couple days because it's still cold in the barn. It uh, tended to uh, cure slower than the gel magic did, so break out the, the fine side of our little grinder here. I, I like these types because they're more open and so uh, the stuff tends to fall through. Just keep working it around, you'll see how the little edges are starting to come out now. shape it back into the other one so you don't wind up with a heavy ramp here. Take a look at it here once in a while. It's okay because we want to get down this darkened color here where the epoxy is soaked in a little bit. I also filled along the edges here with the holes. siping hole so I'll get off the excess with this but I'll uh, sand it down. And then on the inside here just gingerly shape the little the V that came out. I'll get the sander out, the little uh, multi-tool sander out to finish this off, but you can see how it's, it's coming in. You know, a nice little stair-stepping effect there. It'll look pretty when, the, uh, when it gets stained. So, 
Let me get the multi-tool out. Let's try this again with a battery in it. Well, you can see how these colors, let me zoom in here. Okay, you can see how we got a nice little stair stepping. I was poking the uh, the sides and move, flexing them in and out, and uh, since I put these the block underneath and the uh, these fillets in, it's really uh, tightened up. So, also I want to. <laughs> Finish sand some of this stuff underneath. Go around with your fingers and gingerly just feel if you get any little things in there. They're going to try to hook you and cut you. Especially later uh, on on the underside of these laminations, there may be some gel magic sticking out or a rough edge that's sticking down. So make sure you sand underneath too. So.